Let's examine the claims behind this 0.3 PSI number. One of these is that the engine was shut down 32 inches above the lunar surface. On most of the Apollo missions, the lunar module was in free fall for the last two to four feet. In the standard configuration, the end of the nozzle was about 18 inches higher than the landing pads. The last three Apollo missions took lunar rovers to the moon and the nozzle was extended 10 inches to put more pressure up in the throat of the engine and improve the power. So the lowest any nozzle got before the commander shut off the engine was about 32 inches. This claim is in direct contradiction to the official NASA footage of Apollo 11, which reveals the Eagle's descent engine was still running when the foot pads touched the surface and remained running for a good five seconds afterwards. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. This places the engine bell six inches above the lunar surface while running just under 3,000 pounds of thrust. The next relevant item of evidence is a picture of an engine being tested in a near vacuum. Webb points out that this flame has a spread angle of 85 degrees. He then uses this angle to calculate the pressure on the ground as 0.301 PSIA. Well, the calculations look good, but there is a big problem with one of the assumptions. Namely, that the 85 degree spread is uniform and the flame is evenly expanding into the corresponding area. If we look again at the earlier photo, you'll notice the flame coming out at 85 degrees is only a fine spray of exhaust gas because you can easily see through it. The bulk of the flame heads straight down. The angle of this flame spread is a few degrees at most. When you have a 54 inch nozzle a few inches above the ground, there isn't really much opportunity for it to spread. This again leads us back to the ground pressure of 1.31 psi, or something slightly less than it. Whilst we're on the subject of craters, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce some new evidence. Something I didn't consider earlier, but which makes the no crater argument more powerful than ever. Here it is. Since the gravity on the moon is six times less, it takes only one sixth of the force to lift and scatter an object than it would take on Earth. Put another way, if it took six pounds of force to lift a rock on Earth, it would take only one pound to lift the same rock on the moon. Put a better way, that 3,000 pounds of thrust has the equivalent of 18,000 pounds of force. It seems Von Braun considered this when he said 0.14 psi would dig a crater. That 0.14 psi doesn't sound like much, but it's the equivalent of 0.84 psi on the Earth. With this in mind, we can determine the amount of pressure needed to push aside the material seen in the close-ups. The stones seen under the engine bell typically have a diameter of around one inch or less. If we treat them as being spherical, that gives them a volume of 0.52 cubic inches. On Earth, a silicate-based stone, such as quartz, of that size would weigh about 1 20th of a pound. With a cross-sectional surface area of 0.8 square inches, the amount of pressure required to lift it would be 0.06 psi. That's on Earth. Now on the Moon, the amount of pressure needed would be one-sixth of that, which is 0.01 psi. Well, that's not much. How about we try something larger, like a brick? A standard brick weighs about 6 pounds, and its smallest face has an area of 13 square inches. To lift this on Earth requires 0.46 psi. On the Moon, just 0.08 psi. But we're dealing with 1.3 psi. What will that lift? I'll spare reading you the gory details and just give you the answers. On Earth, it would lift a 21 inch diameter rock weighing 440 pounds. On the moon, it will lift a 125 inch diameter rock with a mass of 95,000 pounds. And 0.3 psi? On Earth, 
it will lift a 5 pound 5 inch rock on the moon 29 inches and 1170 pounds. It's well known that gravity on the moon is 6 times less than on earth, so you might expect the rocks that could be lifted by the LEM should be 6 times heavier in terms of mass. What's particularly interesting here though is that while the diameter of these rocks we can lift on the moon is greater by a factor of 6, their mass increases by the cube of that. So contrary to what one might expect, the rocks you can scatter on the moon are not 6 times heavier, but 216 times heavier. That's because as the rock gets heavier and larger, their surface area increases. Like a giant sail facing the wind then, there's more exposed area for the rocket exhaust to push against. So, if Phil Webb or anyone else wants to claim the exhaust pressure was only 0.3 psi, go right ahead. With so little gravity holding them down, that sort of pressure would dig through and scatter a loose pile of bricks.